University education in Nigeria has been facing a lot of challenges. One of the major challenges is the issue of funding. And over the years, ASU has gone on several strikes to make their demands known to the federal government on the issue of funding and welfare of lecturers. Has this issue been resolved? No. Is, is Nigeria going to work better on ensuring that the education sector improves? Well, that's a question we do not have an answer to yet, as the budget for education still falls short of what it should be according to UNESCO plan. But uh, this discussion is what we'll be having on the show today. On the state of university education in Nigeria, what is the way forward? What are some of the challenges facing university education in Nigeria with my guest this morning, Professor Joshua Olaleko Ogunwale, the Vice Chancellor of Bowen University, Iwo Ocean State. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Diola. Welcome to the studios. Yeah, thank you. Um, over the years, like I did mention, university education has uh, evolved. It has evolved over time. And one major issue that I can remember is the issue of funding. Right from 1999, we've had a series of strikes, uh, three months, six months, sometimes eight months, up till now. Why is funding a big problem for the Nigerian government to fix when it comes to university education? Okay. Um, the, like you see, the issue with Nigerian university or with funding the university is that uh, university is a money government project. And uh, because of that, you, you really, really need resource, financial resource to run the university. However, the noise with funding is not just the funding. It's what you do with the funding. And that, is, uh, that becomes very important. You can put every, all the money that the university needs and uh, it never gets to the university. Now, I think where the problem is, is that government, um, government is not convinced that, look, all the money we've been putting in the past, we can't see the dividend of this fund. And so the, the onus now lies on the university, okay, to show forth to government that, look, the little you've put over the years, this is what we've been able to achieve with it. This is where we are, all right? Rather than singing every day, bring fund, bring fund, bring fund. And with this, um, with other challenging uh, demands, too, for government, I don't think that um, universities will get fund from government the way they used to get before. That's the candid truth. So the onus lies now on the university to look for alternate means of, um, of meeting their needs, too. There are universities um, outside that have uh, developed strong marriage with corporate organizations. And most of these corporate organizations actually support um, the university in most of, our, of its needs. And so Nigeria universities must begin to think in that direction and not depend solely on government for support and for funding. So um, with that, I think um, government need to first set some um, initial support to place them in, in such a way where they can actually begin to be relevant in relationship with uh, corporate organizations. Once that is done, then government can begin to plan a program of gradually reducing the, the, the fund, while uh, the university, knowing that program also, will begin to develop a program of um, strengthening our marriage with a corporate organization. I think that's where we should go. Okay. Now, there seems to be a strong disparity when we're talking about public and private education in Nigeria. You have uh, a long term experience in public education in Nigeria. Now you've moved to the private sector. Can you give us a bit of a comparison in what you've observed in the past few months? Well, um, you see, in the, with the public university model, mm -hmm. the, the, the thing is this. Um, to a large extent, uh, people, people conduct themselves the way they like. Um, people run program whether it is, um, that program is, um, is productive or not. Um, people, people could, um, or the, the management could just admit as much as they can admit. 
Um, and, and, and then, to a large extent, when you talk about the public university, they get support from government, they get support from uh, um, third fund, all right? And then um, they also get certain good wills, too, from um, government organizations. Now, if you come to the uh, private um, universities, particularly in Nigeria, um, we've not grown to the point where we can get the kind of support that um, the public uh, university is getting. And that is why you notice that to a large extent, uh, the private university model is more prudent, okay, in resource management compared to the public, um, the public model in Nigeria. And um, private universities have um, uh, a more consistent calendar. And that has been one of the strong points for the private university. You can know, any student can know when he or she um, comes to school and when he or she is supposed to graduate with very little um, deviation, if there will be any. So that's a very, that's a strong point for the private um, university. Now, on the other hand, the public university has developed a research enterprise structure, okay? Um, because of um, particularly now the support from Ted Fund. Mm -hmm. But the private university is just evolving a research um, enterprise structure, okay? Because these things are money demanding. Okay, so when you talk about um, research, the public university have a wider latitude, actually, to do any kind of research um, it wants to do. However, when you come to the private university, because of resource, we have been able to, to, to focus on a specific area of research so that um, everyone can put in his or her resource in that area so mm -hmm. that that university will be known in that area of research relative to the other. Now, the public university also he, um, have been able to, because they've been there over the years, have been able to do some kind of um, what you call um, extension services, okay, to communities and so on. Um, private universities have been able to meet the demands of um, the community around it, but it has not gone beyond mm -hmm. that extent. Those are the few things I can say about disparity between the two models. Okay, um, most importantly, again, is the standard of education. How would you describe the standard of education in the public institutions and the private institutions? Hmm. Well, when you talk about standard of education, um, what, one of the, the, the indicators you need to look at, all right, is um, one, the regulation. And we both have the um, same regulatory body, the NUC. Mm -hmm. The NUC regulates um, academic, uh, the standard of academic program in, um, in Nigeria University, okay? Determining whether you can have full accreditation when your program is, um, is, is found to be doing well or um, limited accreditation, which we call interim, mm -hmm. when it seems as if you need to boost um, the, the, the program or you get um, no accreditation at all and that, um, that means you may have to exit the program. The program yes. Okay, now we have that, then you have the quality of the faculty. The mm -hmm. fa quality of faculty becomes um, very important to build uh, the standard and the quality of um, academic education in university. You also need to, need to look at also the quality of the student you are admitting. Mm. Now, all this play a, a big role in terms of um, um, the, the standard of or the quality of education. Now, let me give you an in, instance. There are times um, that in public in some public universities that um, because of interference, okay, you would want just want to take some certain group of students, mm -hmm. you're sure that these students are not doing well, but well, because of pressure, you take them. Um, the university I left before now, there have been series of issues, even in the Senate, about mass failure, even in the university. 
it has become an issue. All right, and uh, we keep saying that this actually originates from we are exactly at the point of uh, admission. What kind of students do you admit? Okay, how do they come in? And so on. Now, if you don't have um, students that are bright in the first instance, there is, there is virtually little you can do to mm -hmm. improve on them and it will speak volume on the quality of education because it's the kind of the intellect of the student, their interaction and so on that makes a difference even in the university um, environment. Yeah, in the, in the private university too, you could have some of these things but uh, not as pronounced as in the um, public university. Now, the, why I say you could have some of those things that maybe private universities that are just coming up because okay. they, they, they want students, mm -hmm. okay? But private universities that are established, private universities that are making names, know to a large extent that you cannot afford to do this, okay? Because um, you, you are going to put a dent on the image of, uh, of, the, of the university. So when you talk about um, standard in the whole, I, I would say that currently the private university is actually a little bit up there, above the public university, when it comes about uh, standard. Because quality also means that um, there must be a level of consistency mm -hmm. in, the in education delivery. And um, you cannot get that kind of consistency with um, a public university where ASU, NASU, um, SANU are in charge. So to a large extent in this country, the private university are having the edge in terms of um, quality of um, um, academic uh, course delivery. Okay. Um, having established that, oftentimes you hear employers of labor say that uh, we do not have employable graduates in the country. How does this statement make you feel? Okay, yeah, you, you, you see, they, they could say that. And mm -hmm. then I, with all sense of responsibility, I think um, they, 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 they have a point because many universities have not been able to find out exactly what the what these employers of labor really wants. Mm -hmm. Many of these universities really don't have a relationship okay. with the market. Many of these universities don't get feedback, all right, on the market. Now, this play a lot, a, a crucial role in the preparing um, the student body and um, getting them ready for the labor market. Now, we, let, let, let me say to a large extent, um, we have been able to overcome that within the, um, the few years that uh, Bowa University um, had been on ground. We were intensifying um, relationship with um, uh, organizations, um, companies, corporate bodies, okay? We're ensuring that our students go to do uh, internship with those um, um, organizations. We, we invite those organizations once in a while to um, meet with the university. We bring um, top um, corporate people to also interact with our students in the university. We've allowed our students to go out uh, to various um, um, functions, all right, that can help to boost their exposure. Now, the, the, all this is the, all this make for the quality of um, of the graduate you send to the market. So the 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 our lecture, our approach to teaching and learning mm -hmm. is not um, is not one way. It's multi-channel, and that makes it um, that makes our students to be able to stand out wherever they find themselves. Let me say that um, we, we've traveled a little while to meet a few corporate organizations and they keep telling us that, oh, you have us, um, your graduate is here, 
your graduate is doing well. Candidly, I have not had in the past seven months I've been, um, I've taken the, um, the stewardship of Bowen University. I've not had any wear that um, a negative comment is made about our, our, our graduates. And then um, um, if you have that going for you, you have a lot going for you, that's what it means, mm -hmm. you know. Okay, and uh, now before, before we delve on Bowen, Bowen okay, University okay. as a university, now let's look at um, relationship between lecturers and students. Oftentimes, we, uh, we know that they, there seems to be a wide gap in terms of relationship between lecturers and students in the universities, unlike in foreign universities where you can actually uh, you can talk to your professors about virtually everything. Schooling in Nigeria has been made so difficult that having to go to school demands some kind of extra attempt by uh, extra efforts on your sides, which is why most people uh, sometimes just give up on the whole process. And I know that you've had opportunity of studying in universities outside the shores of this country. What are we doing wrong in Nigeria, considering that this education is something we uh, took up from our colonial master, the British uh, people? And it seems like we are, not, we are not even close to where it is in the, in the developed world. Okay, um, dear, I won't say your, your observation is, um, has no basis. Um, yes, the, there are there are few times you see this happen. I think it has a lot to do with the personality. I've yeah. been in all my times in the public university and uh, with many of my colleagues. Um, even in the public university, we've had good interaction with students. Um, we've had time to pay students' school fees. Okay, when we some of us see this first as a calling rather than just a mere profession. And so we, we've been able to do some of these things. I remember that I was in, uh, I was in Germany when my, when my master's student um, that I was supervising actually wrote to me that um, he lost whether one of his, the breadwinner, and he will have to exit the program. And immediately we, we work out something so that he can pay his school fees and continued the program until he graduates. If you don't have a relationship with that student, there was no way the student was oh, going yeah. to meet mm -hmm. you to tell you or send you a mail to tell you, look, this is what is happening. Now, for instance, there is, um, there is no student I supervise over the years, even undergraduate student and so on, who doesn't have a meal, at least a meal in my house. Okay? Who doesn't have a meal in my house. It's something I ensure is done. One, you will have interaction with my family. My family must know you. Okay, you should be able to, because the, this mentoring goes beyond just um, the academic thing. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the whole life you need to impart on the, on the student. Now, um, some of our colleagues don't know that. Some of our colleagues um, would, I have seen a colleague who, who had gotten mad with uh, um, a student for coming to his house. Maybe that student could not, uh, um, it was not available in the office, and that student decided to go home. And I, and I, and I, and I, and I had to spend time to talk to him. So the, the thing is, there is this wrong perception we've had. And the perception is, oh, these students will look down on you, all right, if you bring mm -hmm. yourself um, so, so low, and so on. It's a very wrong perception. The thing is, there is no way that student would not respect you and be grateful to you throughout his or her life because you would have shown something in that student's life. Now, it, the, the onus now lies on the managers of the university to ensure that um, there, is, um, the, the, we, there should be an effective aspect of learning. Now, if if you, if, you, if you come to, if you approach the student at the affective domain, it becomes very easy for that student to learn and to interact and to believe you and to listen to virtually everything you are sharing. And then the university is not where um, the master just talk and the, the, the students must just take it, swallow it and go. 
the university is where the master must encourage the student to talk back. Talk back in the sense that um, the, that student should be able to turn to the professor and say, uh, Prof, with all sense of respect, I don't think you are right here. I think this is, this, is, um, this is what I feel it should be, and then a discussion arises. It should not be a situation where um, the, the student may say, I don't think you are right, and the professor take offense. Now, once that professor does that, at least he, he has missed it. He has lost the essence of mental. And that, those are the things um, managers of university need to educate the, the faculty. Don't forget, too, that um, nowadays, particularly in public universities, you give a, someone a job, and the next day he's got into the class and he, start, he has started teaching. That's very wrong. Okay? Mm -hmm. for, for, for one year plus, with a master's degree, I was following a professor to the class, carrying his files, and following him to the class, and, he, and I will listen and take note while he's teaching undergraduate students. I have a master's degree. Okay? Now, uh, that, that is where you learn um, uh, various methods of uh, lecture delivery. That is when you learn how to set questions. That is when you learn how to develop marking schemes and what have you. There must be a learning on the job. And that's one of the things that we've missed out in uh, most um, public universities in Nigeria. Okay, now before, before we leave this issue, let's talk about curriculums. Mm. Uh, we know that the world is evolving, like I mentioned earlier, and uh, can you say it that the curriculums used in universities respond to the need of the 21st century? Okay, um, you see, I can't categorically speak like that because um, um, curriculum is a, should be a dynamic thing. Okay. Curriculum should be evolving and be changing. Mm -hmm. All right? And that, that is actually um, the, the concept in the minds of the originators. Okay? Now, um, in, 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 this, in our system, too, um, in, in the university, uh, a kind of laziness has come in. Laziness because of so many reasons. So that um, even the professor who is teaching this course, all right, the same thing he's been teaching for the past 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, see the same thing he keeps hearing over and over again. Mm -hmm. And because there is nobody to regulate, to supervise, to have oversight, then he keeps doing it. And, um, and, and, and it seems as if he's getting away with it. But the students know the difference. Let me tell you one, one thing. As, as, as a student, the students know if it's the same old note, this man will give mm. a share. And so they go copy from the previous um, um, students who, mm -hmm. who had graduated from that course, collect the note and so on, and wait and keep watching the man in class if he's going to change. And among the students, they discuss that. The students themselves know which professor is good and which professor we can just tolerate. They know that. Now, having said this, um, the most universities in Nigeria that seems to be making um, headway are those universities that does not have um, what, what, what uh, I would call um, or that allow for curriculum review, regular curriculum review. Okay, and um, not just reviewing, reviewing with inputs from, um, from the market becomes yeah. important. You must get feels. What is it now that the, that, um, that the market needs? What is it that uh, we need to put into these to make us start, stand out? What is it, and when I talk about the market, I'm not only talking about the Nigerian market, I'm talking about the global market. Mm -hmm. What is it that, um, the, the world is concentrated now. And then you come together, you sit together, you, you discuss. You may even bring people to, from the corporate world to talk with you. Then you discuss, and then you begin to develop the curriculum. All right. Uh, there's still so much to talk about concerning the state of university education in Nigeria. But we'll take a break.
front line continues afterwards. staying with us on the show the conversation is still ongoing on the state of university education in nigeria but on this part of the show we will be focusing on bowen university as my guest is still in the studio the vice chancellor of bowen university professor joshua ogunwale uh thanks for staying with us thank you too it's been seven months of um assuming office as the vice chancellor of bowen university how would you describe your experience so far Challenging, uh, interesting, intriguing, and um, sometimes stressful. Mm. Well, uh, okay, I, we did establish earlier that uh, you are, of course, you've spent a number of years in the public institution. Now, getting to Bowen University, was it everything you thought it was going to be? Well, um, University generally, mm -hmm. the concept of university generally, whether it is private, it is public, it is mm -hmm. faith based, it is this, is similar. Okay. It's similar. Now, um, what the uniqueness comes in the way the managers of the university decide to run the university. So, but the concept of the university, whatever it is, even when it's a community based university, is, is the same. Now, the onus lies on the managers how they intend to run the university in line with the vision of the university and the mission statement of the university and what have you. So, um, well, well, when, when I was coming, I, I know too that um, for a private university, it will be more demanding because you won't have the liberty that the, you have um, as a manager of public university. When I mean uni um, liberty, uh, the level of accountability um, expected of a manager of a public university is, uh, is lower than that you expect from the manager of a private university. So I'm aware of that um, when I was assuming duty. Okay? And uh, for some of us who believe so much in accountability, and when I talk about accountability, now I'm not talking in the context of um, uh, financial Price, accountability mm -hmm. alone. I'm talking about um, uh, accountability in the entire meaning of, um, of accountability. So um, if, you, if you are the type who comes to work as uh, early as uh, 10 a.m., you can understand that um, you, you must be held accountable for what you are doing. So those are the kind of things I'm, I'm talking about. So the, 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 pr the private university demands um, higher level of accountability. The private mm -hmm. university demands higher level of performance. And the, the for private university is actually performance based. Okay, so I'm aware of that when I was coming in. Okay. When you uh, got into a visual, you outlined some of your plans for the institution. Can you retreat some of those plans? Okay, Diola, if you want me to do that. Yes. Well, we, um, we, when we came in, um, one of the things we, um, we had in mind was to, to ensure first and foremost that the university runs in line with our vision okay. um, and our core values. Now, uh, in, in corporate um, organizations, your core value is who you are. 
So um, we, we felt that, uh, look, what we say we are on paper should, be, should, be, should converge with who we are. All right? And um, we also plan to bring in some um, innovation that is going to help to steer up uh, participation in, uh, in the student body, um, put the faculty on its toes, and um, ensure that um, the university step into the frontiers of, um, of what um, she's doing. Uh, one, of our, one of our strong um, desire was to strengthen our marriage with corporate organizations, which we've been doing. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've been signing a memorandum of understanding. Um, I'm talking about um, active um, collaborations now, all right? I'm talking about co productive collaboration. Um, we've, been, we've, we've been holding the university in a business-like model. Than, uh, than before. Maybe just for instance, an organization say, look, we, we can supply you furnitures, fittings, and what have you, and so on. And we look at that organization as one of the top in the, in the business. And we notice, oh, this organization um, has sister organizations who may be dealing with um, the, their top in um, agriculture, in agricultural business and so on. And then we say, okay, we'll do business with you. However, you talk to your sister organizations too, okay, so that they can take some of our students on internship, all right? And then they can um, also give some little support to what we are doing, inviting them to talk to the students, getting the feedback from them, and so on. So that's the kind of uh, partnership that um, I call uh, active partnership, okay? Not just a one-way partnership. So th those are the things we've been putting in place um, since um, we um, assumed on board uh, Bowen. Uh, we've also um, tried to strengthen our entrepreneurship program. Okay. Um, we, we believe strongly that um, um, the entrepreneurship is not only skill acquisition. That skill acquisition is, um, is just a component of entrepreneurship. Um, Bowen have been known to that uh, as a university that have developed skill acquisition over the years. But we, the, the, the additive we're bringing is that look, how does this student um, takes this idea, turns it into an into innovation, and gets it to the market? What are the processes the student needs to take? Who, who are the people he or she can approach as uh, either as angel investors or as um, venture capitalists? How do you approach them? The how, okay? Now, those are the things we, we, we're putting more effort on. For instance, um, recently we read that um, Jimovia um, de de developed or wrote a book um, African Rise and Shine. Rise and shine yeah. and um, you, you will agree with me that if you are talking about entrepreneur in, uh, in Nigeria, mm -hmm. you, 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 the Modria falls within the top three or top five. And then um, we, at Bowen, we, we read it and uh, we put our heads together. We say, why can't we buy Jimovia's book? And then let's introduce it as leadership to students. Let, them, let us talk back to them and so on. So we approach Jim. And then uh, we asked to buy a hundred copies of the book. Jim gave Bowen free. I mean, he gave the, the hundred copies to Bowen free. I mean, we, we, we came with our check, but he said, no, 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 no. I mean, this university shows we are serious. And uh, now, um, already, um, we have students who are really on the book, even as I'm talking to you right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're on the book. They form uh, uh, a Jimovia uh, book. Um, WhatsApp group, all right? They wake up 4 a.m. to read two, two chapters. And then within 10.30 and 11.30 a.m. or so thereabouts, it's a time they discuss what the, their, their perception of the book and so on. 
I, I am in the group, but I don't say anything except to, to say, hi, I'm awake at 4 a.m. And then I allow them to run freely. But this is what we mean by developing or cultivating the minds. Mm -hmm. And the university is all about mind cultivation. Okay, so those are the things we are introducing into um, Bowen to strengthen um, our, our, the minds in the area of uh, entrepreneurship. Okay. Um, recently, yeah. Bowen University has been uh, in the news, so yeah. to speak, uh, on acts of indiscipline in the university. Nigerians would want to understand your own view on instilling discipline in the university. Okay. Um, you, anywhere in the world, uh, there is this age bracket that, um, that, uh, that have this adventurous uh, mind. They can be wide. Um, they, they want to have their way. They want to try any new thing. They don't bother about the consequences and so on. And it is at that age um, grade that they actually come into the university. And so any manager of, um, of, of the university know that um, he, will, he or she will have to battle with um, things like this, okay, among the youths. Now, everybody must understand that um, in as much as you must give these young people the, uh, uh, that, that ability to explore, all right, to understand themselves, and so on, there must be limits. Now that's where um, the, the, these young people and um, the, their mentors really have differences. They feel that there shouldn't be limits to work and explore. And uh, in life, there must be limits. Now, having said that, um, I think over the years, um, the Bowen University admitted few transfer students. And um, I want to believe that um, they never really bothered much to want to know why these ones um, are transferring or were transferring from the school they were coming from. Some actually came from, um, from, from universities outside the country. Okay. okay, now, they brought in those ones came into the school. And then uh, before you know it, um, they, 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 they'll be used to this freedom that, uh, that has no limits per se. So they, they, they get themselves involved in, um, in drinking, they get themselves involved in doing uh, drugs, they got themselves involved with all sorts of vices. And of course, yes, that's why they, they're in the university. Um, the university is supposed to put their life through. University is supposed to help them to find a direction for their lives. University is not supposed to leave them to just get lost, all right? Uh, explore and get lost and never become anything. University is supposed to be a mood where that young person can come in and then can be, can be shaped, can be sharpened, can be chiseled so that he can become what the society is expecting of him. And that is what we have decided to do in Boy. Aside the, the fact that um, we are a faith-based um, university, mm -hmm. aside from the fact that um, godliness is one of our core values, and that we must be seen not only found to be godly, we must be seen to be godly. All right? We also have a responsibility to develop lives so that they can be useful to the society. Okay? So um, this um, administration, uh, believe strongly that um, the onus lies on us to help to, mo to mold the life of these young people so that they can be leaders that uh, the nation can rely on. So you, what, you, what you may have been hearing or see or read are uh, um, the struggle between the school authority and a and few of those students we feel, no, 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 there's a university, I'm free to do anything I like, and so on. And the, and the authorities say, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. This is a university, yes, you have freedom, 
but there are limitations to your freedom. And that will continue until the message gets around. And I think the message is already getting around. In Nigeria, once you can discipline one or two, people fall in line. They're already falling in line. Okay, okay. Just uh, expand on what the relationship is like now between the management and the students of Bowling Okay, let me, let, me, let me say it this way. Um, every Wednesday, just like today, between uh, the time of 10.30 and 12, um, work stops briefly uh, at Bowen, and we all go to the chapel. Okay? okay, at the chapel, we pray, we had a good time of worship, and then we return back to work. And then most times, um, that's the period also in which the vice chancellor gives news, share news to the students, tell them about um, some evolving things and, uh, and what have you. Now, immediately after the students um, resume from, to school um, in, in, in the first week of uh, January, I think, yes, um, we. I, I was a bit stressed. And so, most times, I don't do the way I used to do when I come to share news in the, in the chapel. I just collect the microphone. I think I did it twice. I just announced, and then I go to sit down. Now, one day, two of my students walk over to me as we're leaving the chapel. And, one, and, and, and the one said, hello, sir, how are you? And dropped something in my pocket. And the same thing another did in the other side of the pocket. So I say, hey, what's happening? And they've gone. All right? And I can't say this is it. And I open, and I open it. One wrote, sir, what's happening to you? This is not how you used to behave. Please cheer up, cheer up, don't give up, and so on. The word, super encouraging words to me. Okay. I got texts, um, SMSs from my students. Tell me, okay. oh, VC, don't give up on us. We'll change, and so on, and things like that. You see, that uh, speaks volume to me than um, any other kind of filler. So I know that um, we have um, a good relationship with the student. It's super. Uh, they also know it's super. Okay. Um, when we first came in, we, the, Bo the, the Bowenites, that's what we call our student dress, can dress anyhow. We never actually mention dressing. The only thing we did is that, look, we must dress well. When we dress well, then we learn. And uh, it was my deputy vice chancellor who called my attention to it. He said, Josh, do you, do you see this thing? This, this, this thing is not changing. You, you don't know what this has done. They put their ties themselves. They do whatever and so on. Mm -hmm. So we, I, we, we believe strongly that the first thing to make things work is that let the leadership be focused. Let, the, the, um, let there be no ambiguity in the direction the leadership wants to go. Everything will follow that. All right, finally, before we let you go, uh, where do you see Bowen investing in the next five years? Well, I see in the next five years, I see Bowen University will be one of the universities um, that um, people we talk about in Nigeria, in terms of um, top three universities in Nigeria that um, everyone would love that um, is, um, is world would... Um, would, would attend. I see um, a university that, bec that uh, will stand at the center of excellence, particularly in space research in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I see um, a university that is um, a center for entrepreneurship development. I see a university where um, the, it, will, it will be a center of excellence for um, teaching on godliness, um, excellence, and leadership, which we've started. And let me tell you that uh, one or two universities have approached us already, that they want our curriculum for that. Okay, we, we see, I see um, Bowen University as a, as a university where every professor would love to work in, either come on sabbatical or even take a tenureship. I see Bowen University as a university that's going to set a template for private universities in Nigeria. I see Bowen University as that university that the Bible described as um, the city that is placed on a hill that cannot be hidden in the next five years.
by the grace of God, is doable. Amen. Thank you Amen. very uh, very much, Professor Joshua Ogunwali, for coming to the studios this morning. And uh, that's the march we'll be taking on front line today. Uh, the state of education in Nigeria needs to be worked upon. And of course, Bowen University, the University of the Nigeria Baptist Convention, is situated at Iwo Oshin State. That is a place where you get qualitative and quantitative education for your words. Uh, do, do approach the school to see what they are doing there. That's the march I'll be taking. My name is Adiola Adegoke. Do enjoy the rest of your day.